How's it going, guys? Man, look at that. My windshield fogged up. I had the window open for two minutes. I had the door open for two minutes. Everything. Holy moly. Oh, that's not a good thing. And my headlight fogged up. Time to put the heat on in here to dry it out. Um, basically, the video is not about my car. I'm here to steal this negative cable. And I'm here to steal this positive cable. Okay, I got myself a brand new battery. 725 cold cranking amps. So we got ourselves a beast. I'm going to grab those two cables and tomorrow we're going to try and kick off the Ruben motor. So, um, it's almost impossible to spin with the uh, battery charger on the boost. That's just useless. Everybody knows, you know, they say they do 200 amps. If you read it, you're supposed to put it on 200 amps, wait X amount of seconds to put a load into the battery, and then do it. So it's really a load of crap. It's a lie. Um, the jumper box is good to jump a car if the car fires right up. <laughs> so that's about dead. And it's it's a good high quality one. Good high quality ones are expensive, so it's time to replace that. Uh, so basically, I got a battery. Um, I'm going to grab those two cables right there. It doesn't give me... I can't get too far away from it with the battery, as you can see. Just like when we did Junior's car. But I had these in stock. This one usually goes from the battery to the solenoid. Um, and then, I don't know. Somewhere. Some ground. But whatever. Uh, got a set of spark plugs for it. I hope they're right. Because I didn't purchase them. Um, and the distributor is in and set at... Uh, 8 degrees before top dead center I think I said that so with that where the chain runs across is in the way of the distributor if you use the factory hooks there's some real some real uh, brain surgeons there so the engine sitting back down on the ground right now I gotta figure out something uh, I didn't have any American bolts to hook the chain to the bar housing so I gotta grab some bolts here before I walk out of the garage and uh like I said, I'm going to try and kick it off. I'm not going to say we're going to run it for 20 minutes. Obviously not. I'm going to have no cooling in it. Um, I'd like to run it long enough to see if I could hear any noises in it, which is going to be pretty hard. Uh, open manifolds. Um, but I'd like to run it long enough to see what the oil pressure is, even though the engine's not going to warm up. And I'd like to run it long enough that whatever rust is on those valves, because the engine sat, I'm assuming, for years, and however it sits, some of the valves are open, and they do get surface rust on them. I want to see if I can beat some of that rust off so I can give this thing a quick leak down check and see. Even though I know it won't be fully accurate, and if it's just a little surface rust on the valves, the rest of it will beat off and the cylinders will seal better. Um, I did go down four of the cylinders a couple of weeks ago with the boroscope. I didn't have my camera for that. Uh, they look good. Like I said, the motor wasn't seized. So, and when you, there was no distributor in the motor, but when you look down the back, uh, there's no signs of any surface rust where the distributor goes down into the block, which is about this far down, and there was no signs of any water damage in the valley, and there's no sludge in the valley whatsoever. Um, looks like the engine's never been apart, and has no gaskets on the manifolds, and it still looks like it has the factory seals on an intake manifold. Um, so, like I said, I'm not sure how long ago this motor was pulled out. It was supposedly a good and up and running engine when it came out, so I can't make no promises on that. I never saw it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but like I said, I'm hoping it's just a good enough foundation for Ruben to move forward on. That's, that's, that would make me happy. That would make me happy. Um, whether it's a, a new chain, a lot of new gaskets, paint it, put it in, a new chain, maybe a cam lifters and some springs, or leave it alone, paint it, put it in, which is, I would definitely go with the gaskets and the chain at a minimum. Um, as I did crank this thing around, I didn't measure it with a dial indicator, but all the valves were opening and closing, and they're not just opening a little bit, they're opening a decent amount. So there's obviously no rounded or close to rounded over lobes in it. Uh, 
So, with that, uh, like I said, tomorrow we're going to try and uh, make a video. And this stuff will be here just a couple more days. A couple more days. Junior's off now. He took the front valance. That car's a valance. So it'll be behind the bumper and hangs below the bumper. And it ties this fender to that fender, which is about six inches worth. There's two holes cut in. That's where the bumper brackets come through. And then you have a lip here with a grill. It's, you see it, it's below the grill, so it would be like this grill sitting on here, but this doesn't have the trim on it. His wouldn't have a trim. So you do see it there. Um, I told him, I see one tiny little dent on the bottom corner, probably from when they did what they did. You can't see it when you look head on. I said, don't tweak nothing. I said, we got to fit it to the car, and then if you want to take care of that tiny little measly little thing, I said, that's up to you, because anything you do now will just crack off. Um, it looked pretty good when we pulled the, uh, the bumper off, so, but, uh, we're going to be going to a different fender, I think. <laughs> I was finally notified by the people yesterday, finally, and now this is going on for weeks, that they were finally taking it to the shipper to get me the estimate. So, and I bought this thing a couple of weeks ago, so, I'm hoping it goes well. Um, I actually did a search for another fender. And the fender I found is upstate New York, and it's the same distance from my house to upstate New York where it is as if I drove down to Maryland to pick up this other fender. So, and the other one's more money, and I didn't, I don't see it, you know, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't have a good picture of it, even though they say there's no damage to it. Anybody that deals with a boneyard, you know what that means. That just means it wasn't dragged for three days. It was only dragged around for two days. So, if worse comes to worse, it's a road trip. I'm hoping not. Uh, but I really want to get this thing here. Um, and like I said, we're going to be hustling around this weekend, getting everything ready. And Sunday, this will disappear. And hopefully Sunday, the other car will be in here. If not, probably not. His other car will probably come in here Monday because I'll spend uh, Sunday preparing the AMX and stuff again to get it ready. It's not fully sealed. So, but with that, we'll be moving forward. Um, so that's it, guys. I think I gabbed enough. Let me pull these two cables off. Okay, this should do it. Two bolts. I'll make whatever spaces I need to lift that motor. They should be the same as bells and bolts. It's one of my starter buttons. I think the other one is at work. I just want to be sure. There you go. Made in the USA. Wow. I've had this thing a while. Um, and the two cables. Positive. And the negative. So, and I got the brain the battery at work. So, I think I also need... I think somewhere in here was a bottle I was holding. And I found it. And I found it. It's just the uh, Zinc Plus breaking oil added a bottle. I know this will handle gasoline. This will allow me to fill the bowl in that quadrajet. And hopefully the uh, quadrajet works. If not, we'll be up. So, it's got to be good for you, Ruben. It's for hot rods and race engines. <laughs> so, Okay, that's it guys. Let's load this junk in the car and uh, let's call it good. Everybody have a good night.